Hey, good morning. This is Antoine Meeks with Carpet and Flooring Transformers right here. We're in Suwannee, Georgia. I'm getting ready to do a restretch of this whole entire upstairs, and then we're going to clean it afterwards. So I just want to show you guys the situation, and then we're going to get to it, show you how the carpet repair expert does what he does. And that's me, Antoine Meeks with Carpet and Flooring Transformers and my guy, Vincent Alexander. So with that being said, we're gonna, I'm gonna flip the cameras so I can show you guys uh, the situation. Bear with me for one second. I got a new device here and I'm, I'm learning it. Learning it. So let me flip this camera. Okay, let's see. There we have it. So, you see these wrinkles here in this carpet, in this master bedroom, this is. You see that? And... There are more wrinkles right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the carpet loose from the sides of the baseboards around the perimeter of the room. As you can see, that doorway there, we're gonna take the carpet loose there. Take the carpet loose from that wall there. And what we're doing is we um, relinquishing the uh, pressure off the uh, tack strip so that we can get a carpet, a nice even pull. So Vincent is getting uh, the tools that we need to do this job, the stretcher. We use a power stretcher and then um, we're gonna get right into it. Just kinda wanna show you the situation. And we're also gonna be stretching this hallway which is it's going to be a fun, a fun job to uh, learn how to stretch on because we have a lot of columns and obstacles in a way that we need to uh, address and show you guys how to maneuver around that type of stuff when you run across. It's probably going to be one of the most challenging restretches that I've had to encounter, but it's going to be a fun one to learn on. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm pulling the carpet up from the tack strips. The tack strips is what holds the carpet in place. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta release the resistance so you can get a good pull on your carpet, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, Wrinkles right here. I'm gonna address those wrinkles. So I pull the carpet from the tack strips up to the point of the wrinkles. I'm using this room is long, it's probably about 24, 24 foot. So uh 24 feet to be politically correct. Um so I'm using my rat tail because we have a subfloor, a wooden subfloor here. That digs into that. Um, I do have a double, double tail, rat tail, but I'm using this single pole rat tail right here uh, for right now, for the sake of this video. So, with that being said, guys, you take your stretcher. Me myself, I like to put it about about eight, six to eight inches away from the wall, so I can get a good pull on it. Put it there, put it in lock position. There's a lock position on this, guys. That, that's an important piece of this, is that uh, once you get to a place, get it to a place where you're comfortable, you want to lock it in so that you can continue working. So anyway, I got it in lock, 
And always look at my work. Always look behind at your work so you can see what you're doing. Got to see where you're going. So, and then I get, get it a nice little stretch. Okay, and you go. Until you see results. Okay. Now don't worry about that there. Okay. Take your kicker. Give it a little kick. And I don't even, sometimes I don't even use my kicker once I use my stretcher, but I just like to get it, get that nice little definition. Tuck it in there, I pull it about two inches, maybe three. Move your stretcher over and repeat the process. Nice and flat. Sometimes if the gap is big enough in between your baseboard, you can just tuck, tuck all of what you pulled down in between the baseboards. And sometimes you gotta use your knife and cut. Uh, depends on how thick the carpet is and how thick the gap is, so on and so forth. sure you have your tools. Have all the right tools. I see some guys out here working, you know, they don't have a pop piston and call yourself doing the repair. Not on my watch. So now since I took the loose here, I want to just go this way with it. Make sure we get that nice and tight. A room this size, no furniture. This is about, like I said, 13, 14 by 24. Uh, I charge about 200 bucks. But you know, you set your own prices. I'm not here to tell you how, how to charge and how much to charge. But, you know, what is the job worth to you? What is your time worth to you? And that's how you determine your prices, you know? We're doing about, I've done a lot of work for this. This is a, a property manager. Uh, I've been doing work for this lady for about, almost about four years or so. So she sent me a lot of work. So, you know, I try to, I try to look out for her as much as I possibly can, you know. Uh, don't try to break break the bank on one one job or one customer, guys. It's about relationships. Building relationships. In times like this with the coronavirus going on and everything, shit, I can't afford to be too goddamn picky. <laughs> That's a fact. But not desperate either. So that's also a fact.
Okay. One half of the room stretch. And just, okay. Um, what I want to show here, I left this intentional piece because uh, some guys that I uh, mentor and talk to, they, um, they're scared to cut. And they don't know exactly how to cut. So they, they kind of, uh, it's a deterrent from them um, learning and honing in on these skills. Because, you know, in this business, man, you're going to make mistakes until you learn how to do it right. You know, I, I make mistakes still. As long as I've been doing this, I still make mistakes, but I know how to correct them. So just to show you guys how to cut without worrying about cutting the carpet too short. You want to take your knife, your blade, and I put mine right, right in the crease of the baseboard and the carpet. If you got it in the crease, make sure you you have to make sure the carpet is first tucked in the crease. And when I say tucked, I mean like that. Make sure it's in there. So when it's in there, then you don't have to worry about cutting the carpet short. So you take your knife, go across, bam. See that? Do you see any cuts of the carpet? Not at all. Because you make sure that the carpet is tucked in that crease before you do your cut. If it's tucked in that crease, like I just showed you here, then you don't have to worry about cutting this part of the carpet short and a gap showing. So then you just gently just push that. Another reason why you wanna make sure your knife is in the crease, because if it's like this, guess what you're gonna do? You're going to cut the baseboard. You don't want to be cutting the baseboard. Now you got to paint and all that crazy stuff. See, it's not necessary. Just do it right. Put the knife in the crease. Score across it like that. Boom. Pull your piece out like that. Bam. Okay. Get your vacuum. Vacuum the excess. Got a beautiful finish. And there you have it. Flat carpet. No more speed bumps, no more wrinkles. This is where the major wrinkle was. As you can see, it's a little indentation from where it was, but it's nice and flat. Carpet has been clean, looks beautiful. We just saved this customer about $4,000 and happened to uh, thinking that they would have to replace their carpets, but we proved otherwise. So another fantastic job by yours truly, Antoine Meeks, the carpet repair expert, carpet and flooring transformers. Subscribe. Click the link below for some more innovative, satisfy satisfying videos. Follow us on Instagram at carpet and flooring transformers. Follow us on Twitter at Carpet and Flooring Transformers. And you can follow us on Facebook at Carpet Transformers. Or simply give us a call if you have any questions whatsoever. 770-236-1255. Beautiful.